Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. Typically, when mentioning the descendants of Adam and Eve, the first thought that occurs to people is the story of Cain and Abel. However, many often forget the other biblical accounts that describe the other sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. In this video, I will focus my attention specifically on the daughters of Adam and Eve. Who were these daughters? How many of them existed? Using sources such as the Book of Jubilees, the Holy Bible, and ancient traditions, I will explore and discuss the history of these daughters of Adam. So, if this topic has piqued your interest, don't hesitate to give it a like and leave your comment. Follow along with me for this additional content, The Untold Story of Adam and Eve's Daughters. A topic that is rarely discussed, often overlooked by theologians, biblical scholars, and even those curious about sacred scriptures, is the mystery surrounding the daughters of Adam and Eve. Typically, people read the Bible and focus on the more well-known sons of Adam and Eve, Cain, the firstborn, and Abel, the second. However, they often forget that Adam and Eve had many daughters, as the biblical text in Genesis, chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, reveals intriguing information about the sons and daughters of Adam. The text mentions that after bearing Seth, Adam lived for 800 years, during which he fathered sons and daughters, totaling 930 years of life until his death. The Bible does not provide the names of Adam and Eve's daughters, but there are other texts from ancient Jewish traditions that specify some of their names. Thus, based on the Book of Jubilees, I will mention the names of some of Adam and Eve's daughters according to these ancient Jewish traditions, which offer insights into these less explored figures. For those unfamiliar, the Book of Jubilees is also known as the Little Genesis, due to its connection with the word Jubilee, which means joy. It is part of the Old Testament Apocrypha and narrates the creation of the world, the formation of Adam and Eve after the fall, and tells stories of various Old Testament characters, primarily from the book of Genesis. While it is not a recent text, the oldest manuscript to which we have access dates back to approximately 700 BCE. However, this manuscript is a copy of an even older work. Some scholars associate the Book of Jubilees with the Book of Chronicles, suggesting that the scribe Ezra may have written the text. However, the Book of Jubilees claims that its true author was Moses, who received a revelation from an angel on Mount Horeb. It is noteworthy that the Bible mentions that Moses spent forty days and forty nights on Mount Horeb without eating or drinking water in the presence of God. Historically, due to the antiquity of the text, we cannot dismiss the possibility that Moses was the actual author. The Book of Jubilees enjoys significant presence in Israelite culture, with several copies distributed among the people. Additionally, it mentions another mysterious apocryphal book, the Book of Enoch, which was widely known to the early Christians and even formed part of the biblical canon used by them. This underscores the importance of not dismissing the Book of Jubilees, as it contains events that align with the stories of the Bible. Now, returning to Adam and Eve. According to various ancient Semitic Abrahamic traditions, the first daughter of Adam and Eve was named Avon. Avon, in Phoenician Hebrew, carries the meaning of potency, or simply, vice. She was, therefore, the wife and sister of Cain, who was also a son of Adam and Eve. According to the Book of Jubilees, she bore children to Cain, and one of those children was named Enoch. The construction of a city named after his son is mentioned in the Bible as one of Cain's accomplishments after his banishment due to the murder of Abel. The city was called Enoch, in honor of his son. The name Avon is mentioned in the Book of Jubilees and in other Abrahamic texts. However, in some of these texts, such as the Cave of Treasures, she is called Kelima. Therefore, Kelima was the wife of Cain and the first daughter of Adam and Eve, according to these traditions. According to several ancient Semitic traditions, the second daughter of Adam and Eve was Azura. Azura was the wife of Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve, born after the death of Abel. The name Seth has etymological roots in Hebrew, and its meaning may be associated with the idea of compensation or substitution. This is relevant because, after the murder of Abel by his brother Cain, 
Seth is considered by Adam and Eve as a substitute or divine compensation for the loss of Abel. He is seen as a righteous and pious descendant, and it is through his lineage that the biblical narrative suggests humanity continued to worship God. Furthermore, Seth's genealogy is significant in the Bible because it leads to Noah, who played a crucial role in the flood story and the survival of humanity. Thus, Seth and his wife Azura were a link in the genealogical chain that connects the creation of humanity to later events and important figures in the Judeo-Christian tradition. The Book of Jubilees presents an interesting detail by stating that Azura was initially Abel's wife and became a widow after his death. After Seth came of age, he married Azura, and from their union, the lineage of Seth and Seth himself, who became the initial patriarch of this lineage, descended. The Book of Jubilees informs us that Azura was born in the sixth week of the fourth Jubilee and married her brother Seth in the fifth week of the fifth Jubilee. In the fourth year of the sixth week, she gave birth to a son and named him Enos. Subsequently, when Enos grew up, he married in the third week of the seventh Jubilee with Noam, who was his sister and also the daughter of Seth and Azura. Enos is one of Seth and Azura's sons and is known for his pious descent and devotion to the worship of God. The main reference to Enos in the Bible is in Genesis 5 verses 6 to 11, which describes his genealogy as follows. Seth lived 105 years and begot Enosh. After he begot Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and begot sons and daughters. In total, Seth lived 912 years, and he died. Enosh lived 90 years and begot Kainan. After he begot Kainan, Enosh lived 815 years and begot sons and daughters. In total, Enosh lived 905 years, and he died. The main characteristic attributed to Enos is his practice of prayer and the invocation of the name of God. The following verse in Genesis 4 verse 26 states, At that time people began to call on the name of the Lord. This passage suggests that Enos played an important role in promoting worship and devotion to God in his time, marking a period of spiritual and religious seeking among the descendants of Seth. So, according to the ancient book of Jubilees and Semitic Jewish tradition, Cain married his sister Avon and gave rise to the lineage of Cain. Seth, on the other hand, married his sister Azura and gave rise to the lineage of Seth. You might have been wondering how many sons and daughters Adam and Eve had. The biblical text indicates that they had many sons and daughters, especially considering that Adam lived for over 800 years. In fact, Adam and Eve were the most fertile humans of their time. Eve, as the first woman, was extremely fertile, and Adam was also very fertile. Therefore, according to these ancient traditions, they had hundreds and hundreds of sons and daughters throughout their lives. In modern times, according to the Guinness World Records, the woman who held the record for the highest number of children in human history, as far as we know, was Valentina Vasilyev. She reportedly passed away at the age of 76, leaving behind 69 surviving children, with only two dying at a young age. According to Guinness World Records records, Valentina Vasilyev underwent a total of 27 pregnancies, resulting in 16 pairs of twins, 7 sets of triplets, and 4 sets of quadruplets. While there are other reports of women with 50 or even 60 children, Valentina Vasilyev remains the recognized record holder. However, what I want to emphasize is that Eve surpassed all these women in fertility, as she is considered the most fertile woman in the history of humanity. So, if a woman today or even a hundred years ago were capable of giving birth to about 69 children, we can only imagine what Eve achieved, as she lived much longer, reaching the impressive age of 900 years according to the biblical narrative. Furthermore, according to traditions, Adam and Eve had numerous children, estimated to be around 70 or even more, according to some speculations. Considering their robust health, strength, and fertility, as well as the context of the time that favored procreation, it's possible they had hundreds of sons and daughters. In the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 1, it is mentioned that as the descendants of Adam multiplied on the earth, many beautiful daughters were born. 
A less mentioned curiosity is that both the sons and daughters of Adam and Eve had their own ethnic descent, as Adam and Eve were originally mixed race. This contributed to the ethnic diversity of humanity, which, while exhibiting numerous ethnicities and races, all share a common origin in Adam and Eve. The study of mitochondrial DNA, known as mitochondrial Eve, reinforces this idea, indicating that all of humanity shares a common ancestry despite the ethnic and racial diversity we see in the world today. Therefore, the mitochondrial genetic study revealed that all people descend from the same woman, contributing to the richness of ethnic and racial diversity in our world, all sharing a common connection with our ancestors. So, did you know the story of Adam and Eve's daughters? Feel free to leave your comments. Also, feel free to suggest new topics or characters from the scriptures that you'd like to see in a video. Thank you very much for watching up to this point. See you soon.